Hi everyone, it's me again, and Squish Gang is present. And please don't mind the mattress, I'm washing the bed. <laughs> Today we're gonna do an update on my Eleanor Neal video that I made about three, four months ago. In particular, regarding the video that she had made on the Joy Morgan murder titled The Cult-Like Murder of Joy Morgan. Before we get into that, Amazon, Patreon, ways to support the channel, links to social media, and links to what I'm wearing on my face with affiliate links indicated whenever necessary, all down below. In this video, I also want to reflect on the conversations that we had in the video, why I'm making an update in the first place, and what's kind of been going on. I also want to say that what I've noticed, because I had comments before about the monetization status of that video, how I ran ads on it and stuff like that, is whenever I've demonetized my videos, one of two things have happened. Either the video gets monetized anyways, without my control, or it the you can see like the view count and the exposure rates and stuff like that through all the analytics just goes nowhere. I don't have enough of an audience to reach people who want to watch this without running ads on the videos. So that's why I try to run one every six, seven minutes at most, five minutes-ish, to kind of limit the amount. But like it's a little bit out of my control. I don't want, I can't show my statistics. I want to show like the money, but I wanted to say that there will be ads on the video. If that is a disservice to you, feel free to run an ad block or don't watch. Lots of YouTubers show this as well. Like especially when their videos get demonetized, you can see the arc just drops. So I just want to make sure that this kind of reaches the people who want to see it because most of the viewers of that video were not subscribers of mine. So the video will be chaptered for your viewing pleasure as well. And there will be three parts. Part one will be reflecting on the first part of the video. Part two will be why exactly I'm making an update. And part three, where are we at this exact moment in time? Getting right to part one, let's reflect on the first video. The first video I made was titled Eleanor Neal and the Ethics of True Crime, published September 25th, 2022. Where in this video, I kind of made a point to open up the conversation about true crime beyond simply the idea of should people talk about the deaths of others online for money? Right. I want to talk more about the comment sections, the environments that are being built from these videos, kind of the way that the communities are built around certain creators and some that are not, what they are doing when they are making the videos, and kind of just my general feeling about the content. I got a decent amount of criticism on the video, both good and bad. One of the points I wish to address is that I said that it was not a hate video towards Eleanor Neal. However, I liked and replied to a lot of comments that were very critical towards Eleanor. The reason why I did so is I'm trying to create a safe space for people to be critical of these bigger creators because Eleanor Neal has 2.47 million subscribers and I have 24,000. And at the time, I think I had 15,000. So why I'm saying this is I want to create a space where people feel open to be able to talk about bad feelings they have about creators or good feelings they have about creators without being attacked by the replies. Because if you can see by the sibling of Joy Morgan, when she was commenting on that video, she was getting attacked by Eleanor's fan. And that is why I gave that a space to be critical and I will continue to do so as well. However, there's gonna be people saying ridiculous things, which I had to leave a couple comments calling Eleanor ugly or stupid or things like that, I will get rid of them. However, with that video in particular, it got a lot of views and a lot of comments kind of beyond my control at a certain point. So I haven't checked the comments on it in quite some time. I've liked a couple that have come up recently, but I haven't like sifted through them in a long time. Because you need to understand, right, that I am with talking about true crime curators. This is not a victim of me, Eleanor. Um, I have one, one thirty. I have like less than a 30th of her audience and I average less than a 10th of her views. So to kind of try to say that I'm just trying to beat on someone when they're down is a little bit of something that kind of bothered me because that's discouraging smaller creators from talking about problems they see on the platform with bigger channels. And I'm not trying to victimize myself by any means because I could definitely take the criticism, but kind of keep that in mind when you're having these conversations because are we just supposed to let people run around unchecked? Because I don't feel like that's the case. And to kind of talk about these more under the radar kind of creators that aren't usually the ones being picked on in this creator circle, like I have one I saw that got a lot of flack was Bailey Sarian, for example. I feel like it was a bit strange to be so defensive of this person, especially given that, you know, just like I don't know them, you don't really know them either. But 
I am, it's fair to criticize me in that sense. I'm not saying don't, but I'm just saying maybe consider that a little bit more where I'm coming from in this circumstance. But this channel overall is to avoid black and white thinking because there's this idea that there are two sides to everything. And that is it. As in like, if you are not with me, you are against me. So if people liked Eleanor Neal in my comments that I was going to hate them, or if people thought Eleanor was wrong in that circumstance, she has to be wrong in every circumstance. And I try not to kind of go into that. In my last video, if you haven't watched it, I read from Veil's distortion about black and white thinking. And I'm just going to read that excerpt again because it was really, really good. And I want to discuss it one more time. So it says here, at the heart of argument culture, Tannen writes, is our habit of seeing issues and ideas as absolute and irreconcilable principles continually at war. The argument culture is the new in the news media, which in the case could be YouTube media as well, doesn't just apply the framing of topics, Tannen says, but extends to bulldogish attitude of journalists themselves who are constantly on the lookout for scandals, slip ups, foilables, improperties, and contradictions among those reports and holds to account especially publicly elected figures. This scandal-obsessed press is a direct legacy of the golden years of investigative journalism of Vietnam and Watergate eras, huge victories of unmasking, which the news media is continuously trying to replicate today, which has now come to include celebrities and members of general public as targets. One of the most damaging manifestations of argument culture in the news is the ever-increasing habit of drawing its contents from the battles of rage of social media, especially on Twitter. The reality distortion that continues from this type of cheap and lazy journalism is amplified by the fact that Twitter is a virtual and disembodiment forum that does not physically exist in any sense of the word. There are positive aspects to this technology, of course, but at its worst, the platform is an anarchical tower of Babel, where the loudest and most crafty opinion mongers and dogmatists rise to the top of the broth throughout self-righteous monologues and pronunciations. Not unlike the news, Twitter distorts reality by carcituating our world, but although the distillation of voices from an otherwise silent ocean of humanity. Twitter's unreliability is underscored by the fact that, that what is said there and related to often lacks context, is elicited reflexively of the heart of the moment, sometimes by bots and other agents, uh, agent provocateurs, and while not spoken of the discussions that occur face to face. When controversies involving polarized people rage on social media, whether they be about verbal gaffes, claims of racism or gender issues and, ident uh, and identity politics, and when the news media obsessively co-ops these into their coverage, journalists are giving disproportional representation to and amplifying these conflicts, creating an illusion that the points of contention reflect mass consensus. They often do not. These uh, spates are either constantly flaring up around us, nor do they involve us to the extent the newsmongers would like us to think. So this is that idea that, you know, I'm going to be coming for this person for the sake of controversy. And I'm just trying to stir up on that ground because that is kind of the system of reporting. What I wanted to talk about more was this idea of how we relate to the content that we watch, the concepts that kind of come through, and the ways that we view each other in regards to what type of content that we watch. I don't want people to think that I'm just attacking somebody and even in making of this video. However, when you create true crime content, whether you want to admit it or not, there are victims involved. And true victims, not me saying that someone reported something poorly when they have 2.47 million subscribers make, I would assume, millions of dollars a year at this point, because if she's getting probably 3 million views a month on average, if I look at just the views that she has, plus sponsorships, that's at least probably, I can't guess, but tens of thousands a month easily, right? I'm talking about victims like families having their trauma resurfaced and people coming for the families in the resurfacing of that trauma. You can, I can, I'm going to put in the excerpt right now of when I was talking about the sibling of Joy Morgan commenting on the video. Morally sound as you say you were, you would either turn the comment section off completely or limit them where people are not going to be speculating on someone's assault or murder openly in your comment section to where the family can see it. Because in these comments, and I have the screenshots on the screen, right, the allegedly the family, one of the family members of the victim is like, this is wildly inaccurate. And people are defending Eleanor by being like, well, it's what you can find online. It's like, if you're not certain of accuracy, don't report it when you're talking about something as serious as this, right? Now, I have censored the name in this video because she asked for privacy. And please do not seek out this person. And please do not seek out their family. If you start commenting about them in my comments, I will block you. 
Um, I am going to be looking for the name in the comments. Please do not talk about them by name. Uh, they have had enough trouble with this whole thing. And we'll get into that a little bit more after. And I rewatched my video and my point still stands and my opinions on this still stand. And you'll see by part two of this video that I was a little bit more correct even than I thought I was going to be. And that is because of the response to my video or the response to the family's desires as a result of the discussion being brought up. And I know the issues of speculation still remain in this whole thing. And I'm really happy that the channel has grown to, my channel specifically, has grown to a point where we can have these more constructive conversations together. And I do applaud them in the comments. What I'm just saying is to be a bit careful on when you're including the family and the true victims of this whole ordeal. Because I'm not a victim and Eleanor's not a victim in this. So go to part two and why I'm making an update. In the same way that I was reached out to make the first video via Twitter DM, not by a family member, I was messaged to make this one. But instead, I was actually messaged by Joy Morgan's sibling who commented on the original Eleanor Neal video. She reached out to me directly, unprompted, months after my video had come out. And I want to be clear that I am blurring and censoring stuff for this family's privacy. And I will be blocking the disparaging comments as I mentioned. They have gone through enough already through this whole ordeal. I also want to state that this person has submitted proof to me that they are related to Joy Morgan. I will insert a picture here, censored of course, that shows them with Joy Morgan as a young child. And based on I've seen what they look like now, I they look like that is them as a kid. According to the DMs, I have they have um, had an email exchange with Eleanor Neal's manager. And this is between Joy Morgan's sibling, the one that was commenting, and Eleanor. And I have been given direct permission to share these with you. And I'm gonna put and I'm gonna put the screenshots that I'm reading on the screen as well. And I'm gonna read them directly just so I don't make any mistakes. So it says as much as such. It reads as such. Hello. Joy Morgan is my older sister. I would like you to delete the video you made about my older sister as it has a lot of misinformation. Me and my family have reached out on various social media platforms and in YouTube comments. The comments on YouTube are are, are also vile blaming my sister for her death and theorizing about her death, etc. I am only 15 and I shouldn't have to argue with people in the comments about my own sister's death. All of this is still very raw to my family and I, and I, even three years on, it still hurts to see our sister slash auntie slash daughter reported on in such an odd way. I don't know where you got your information in this video, but we as a family have never heard it in the press or by mouth of police. So if you see this, please delete the video. Thank you. Then they get a reply. Hi, blank. Thank you for your email and my sincerest apologies for only getting back to you now. For transparency, we have a quite a strict filtering system on Eleanor's inbox due to the volume of emails she receives. Unfortunately, this ended up in our spam filter and has only been spotted today. I'm emailing you now to confirm that Eleanor has immediately removed the video. She sends her apologies for any distress this might have caused you or your family. Please know it was and never is her intention to spread misinformation or upset anyone, especially those affected when creating content. Please let us know if there's anything else we can do. And again, our sincerest apologies. Best wishes, Beth, Eleanor's manager. Please do email me directly for any further for anything further. I'll be happy to help immediately. To which this person does email them back and says the following. Hello, thank you. A lot of the things she stated in the video were not true and I have never heard it in the media or from the police officers or even my family. So I hope you could compile a list of her sources. As I am baffled by this video has caused me and my family a lot of harm. Thank you again. Blank. To which there is no response from Eleanor nor her manager. So let's kind of talk about this a little bit. And kind of so there are several points that I want to point out in this exchange. For one, there are no actual comments from Eleanor. There are comments from her manager. Eleanor does not have a quote in the email. Eleanor does not reach out to this person directly. I've asked them. There is no correction in other videos, to my understanding. There is no for for all we know, the manager just said that to make Eleanor look good. I'm not saying that's necessarily true. That is a legend. But what I'm saying is, when it is something this important, quite literally the murder of a sibling, there is a, a level of care beyond just misstepping when you're, for example, reading someone's social media posts. Like if I'm doing a report as like a T channel and I misconstrue a Jaclyn Hill tweet, for me to have be to apologize on behalf of my manager for that might be one thing. I don't have a manager, by the way, but I'm saying hypothetically. Versus I have misrepresented and allowed an environment of harm to occur from someone's family's member's death. 
This is why true crime has to be dealt with in a different way. This is why people make these comments because real harm occurs to people who aren't rich and famous and people who can't have people in their corner to help them, people who don't have lawyers to get these things taken down, people who don't have these support systems allotted to them, people who can't afford therapy, right? Not necessarily saying whether this family does or does not, but these are regular people that don't have the resources that even people like Eleanor have, even people like me have to some extent, even though I am nowhere near that. And that is why that discussion came up, you know, because I was getting some crazy criticism like, I'm mad at Eleanor because I'm ugly. Pardon my French, but you'd be fucking kidding. <laughs> like, c'est vrai, it's good to call this. <laughs> you know, to hit them with the Quebecois there for a second, you know, because what the fuck are you on to say that I'm jealous of someone's looks because she misrepresented a family's trauma, did nothing about it, and allowed people to speculate about it in her comment section? Like, I'm not one to be angry in my videos. I'm not one to try to you know, victimize anybody or try to, you know, be, make villains out of people. But to what point have you crafted maybe an environment that allows this to happen? I just can't feel, I just feel like there's something here that really is disparaging and disappointing. I will commend Eleanor that the video was removed because I can understand there was a Nord, the famous NordVPN sponsorship on that video. And when you do have sponsored content, it is quite hard contractually to remove it due to the fact that there's usually a limit on the amount of time you've put on it. However, I know for, I don't know if I'm, I, in past sponsorships I've had with things alike to NordVPN, it was 30 days. So she did remove it over a month after. So that might've not necessarily even been that hard, but that's just speculation. But I do want to commend removing it because you do get residual ad sets from things and stuff like that. According to Joy Morgan's sibling, they were never provided with any sources no, nor any further communication. I also want to mention that Joy Morgan's sibling gave me a specific comment to read verbatim to all of you. She said that she was never provided with anything. And then I said, okay, good to know. I am scripting right now. Is there anything you want to say? They say the following. I just would like to stress that Joy was a child when she joined the church. And that we had silly little sibling arguments, but she never stopped loving me or members of her slash our family that didn't fit her belief system. Because the way that Eleanor had positioned the video, it may seem like Joy had hated her family at the end. And this and her sibling wanted to say that this was not true. And this was a main point of contention from the video that really hurt her and her family. And I want to say that I'm doing this to bring peace to the family. So please let them be. If you have any flack directed towards me, because I'm the one who reopened this by making the first commentary video on it. I can take it, but do not go for somebody who, who had lost a member of their family. So part three, the, where are we now? I am on recording on OBS Labs, so I'll be able to show my YouTube screen. And I'm gonna sh we're going to go through Eleanor's channel really quick. But as far as I know, as of right now, so let me tell you the time. It is January 4th at 3.58 p.m. Okay. There is no video the video is deleted there are no public comments on the deletion of the video no community tab and the comment and the content that she's making is still very similar to that of the content that i criticized so if we go down here click on eleanor's channel um there's gonna be no volume for you because um i don't have anything wired in right now but here is more crime videos, Island Party Murders, Killer Santa Christmas Day Massacre. And if we click on a comment section, again, another NordVPN ad. Eleanor, for the first time in his life, he was happy. Also, Eleanor shows picture of him with huge black eyes, laughing, crying emoji. And there's like speculation. Eleanor may not be judging, but I sure am. It's, again, more of the same, I find. But, again, take with that what you will, I suppose. Um, I'm just here to show you where everything is at this time. So, more of the same content. If we go back here... And we go to community tab. No community tab. 10 days ago, it's about Christmas. 
six months ago. This was before my video was made. Nothing. This is just talking about vlog channels. Nothing. Now we are a year ago. This is before the video was made. So nothing has changed. No comments, nothing. Yeah, that's it. So, and the email that is available is I would, I would assume to the manager. So as you can tell by the um, company URL there. So we're going to conclude the video there then. To conclude, true crime content, whether you enjoy it or not, you have to understand, has victims involved. No matter how well the content is covered, um, there are always going to be people who don't like it the same way as all other types of content. And I'm just opening a critical conversation of that content. I do not dislike you personally. If you like true crime content, I have no feelings towards it. I can, however, criticize creators that handle it poorly, specifically with certain situations, talking about trauma that other people faced in and uh, profiting off of it and becoming far more successful without having to deal with any of the repercussions. Um, links, sources, Amazon, Patreon, ways to support the channel, everything I'm wearing on my face and where it is linked. And affiliated links are marked as such when necessary, all down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And please reach out to me for any comments. You can DM me video ideas. There is also my email for long form suggestions down below. And if you feel like having any sneak peeks to my videos or anything like that, I've started kind of sharing that stuff over on Patreon. So thank you all. And I hope you have a good day. Bye.